Hey, welcome to the Iguazu MLOS platform tutorial. My name is Gilad, and I'm here to walk you through the product. So what is this platform? Our focus is enabling deployment to production. This challenge is sometimes overlooked because we can get so excited about what the model does, but in the real world, the model itself is just a small portion of the deployment. The challenges are usually related to handling data, since it behaves differently in production. Another important aspect is understanding model behavior because in production, model performance may drift and someone needs to actively monitor this and get alerts when such drift occurs. So let's go to the platform and see it in action. This project view shows you all your data science projects with real-time counters for the number of jobs and real-time functions that are currently running and the number of jobs that are in a failed state. We see here several demo projects. And in this session, when I click on that project, I see a project overview screen where you have a very comprehensive view about the project. You can see operational stats on the jobs and real-time functions that are currently running in the project, along with some information about other assets. From here, we can drill down to see more granular information about the model features, jobs and pipelines, real-time functions, and so forth. The Feature Store view allows you to see the different features created, including the transformation pipelines and statistics. The Artifact view enables you to see the different outputs that were created during the development process, including tabular data and graph data. All these outputs are versioned and stored as part of the platform's experiment tracking capabilities. The model view includes several aspects. The first is the model artifacts, where it is possible to see the features that are related to the model. Then we have the model endpoints that enable us to view the actual deployments of the models. Here you can see real data, such as feature analysis. Finally, we can see the real-time pipelines in action, including all the transformations and actions that take place before and after running the model. This allows infinite flexibility with extremely user-friendly tools and processes. Jobs and workflows allow creating batch-oriented processes, such as model training. The platform has integration with Kubeflow, so you can run those jobs individually or as part of a greater workflow. Finally, you can also schedule jobs to run in any future time or recurrent pattern. To ensure portability, all code is stored. You can see all the code in the ML function view. All code is versioned, and this can also be associated with specific git commits. Real-time functions show a view of the current functions that are running in the background. This is where you can get more fine-grained control over the serverless capabilities, such as the amount of memory, CPU that those functions take, and the scalability parameters. You can also set up multiple triggers, so the functions are executed not just via HTTP, but also that's how you can easily connect your existing code to streaming without having to write code that reads from the stream. And finally, we have the API Gateway, where it is possible to specify canary deployments to test models, as well as perform rolling upgrades. The UI is not just for viewing the status. You can use the UI to perform tasks. For example, I'd like to run a new job. I can click on Create Job, and I get a list of relevant functions on a function marketplace. Once I choose the function, I can set all the relevant parameters and then select whether I'd like to run the job immediately or schedule the job for a later time. You can also get services running in the platform on top of the Kubernetes cluster. The Kubernetes deployment could be a vanilla Kubernetes or cloud-based like AWS EKS, Azure, or Google Cloud. And this is the view where the users can view and manage all those services in the platform. To name a few, we have services like Jupyter, Spark, Presto, MPI, Grafana, and others. To create a service, you just go through this quick wizard as a data scientist, I may want to create my own Jupyter, give it a name, set up resources, then we have to set up some custom parameters, and that's it. Once you do that, you're going to get your service up and running on the cluster in a few seconds. Aside from the UI, most of the time the developer will spend their time using their IDE, such as PyCharm or VS Code or a cloud-based environment, such as AWS SageMaker or Azure Machine Learning Studio. Iguazo provides an easy-to-use SDK for working with the platform for remote, so you can leverage the power of this cluster even if you're working from your laptop. As we have seen, Iguazo has a built-in Jupyter service, and it has lots of examples and end-to-end -end demos that are very useful to learn how to work with the platform it's already in use. In the product, we also have use for administrators. You can manage your cluster storage, create and manage users and groups, and set security policies, plus integration with LDAP. For example, you can view events and alerts, and we have a comprehensive set of monitoring reports to monitor your cluster usage all the way down to individual pods. If you would like to learn more about the product, I suggest you check out our documentation site. We have more in-depth information there, 
And if you're a data scientist, I would recommend going directly to the data science and machine learning section. Furthermore, our YouTube channel includes additional material. I hope this video helped you better understand the platform. Please contact us if you have any questions or comments, and if you'd like to try it out, just go to iguazio.com, click on Try Iguazio, and fill in the form.